Iran is no stranger to the handwoven carpet market. Traditionally, the country has been weaving carpets for millennia with skills passed down through generations, some even as highly protected family secrets. Iranians were among the pioneers of weaving carpets and with years of experience, they have achieved a great deal of perfection in this arena. The craft has represented Iran's rich culture and heritage for centuries and has been adored all over the world. Hello and welcome to another edition of Bazaar. Today we are going to explore Iran's handwoven carpet market. We wanted to see why these carpets are highly coveted and what makes them so expensive. Plus, we will look at some of this sector's contributions to Iranian culture and the national economy. So, stay with us and let's roll out the show. Our quest for answers led us to the 29th International Exhibition of Handmade Iranian Carpets. This event is viewed by many industry participants as the world's largest handmade carpet expo when it comes to quantity and quality. Visitors were dazzled by thousands of handwoven carpets in all sorts of contemporary and traditional design patterns. The exhibition is a place for national and international trade and commercial envoys to visit in order to size up the market and make business deals. All sorts of carpets are found here that were brought in from all corners of Iran, including very rare rugs. We caught up with a few vendors to see what type of activities they carry out. A high quality Iranian carpet can cost thousands of dollars, with antique rugs fetching even higher prices. There is so much variety to choose from, from the floral designs of Isfahan to the intricate fine details of Qom carpets and the strong compact bijar rugs made in western Kurdish villages. The list goes on and on. However, most carpets are not valued based on not count but rather because of their materials, design and overall size. ما در استان قوم تولید فرش داریم استان قوم صرفا تخصصی فرش تمام ابریشم می بافه فرش ابریشم که ابریشم طبیعی هست و جنس متریالش بیست و جنسش ابریشمه که از کرم ابریشم و پیله و فرایند خاص خود چه داره برای تولید و فرش های پشم و ترک هم که از پشم گوسفندان و خدمت شما هست شبت که حالا در شق پشم ممکنه کارخانجات ریسندگی این پشم و تبدیل الیاف و تبدیل به نق پشم بکنن نق فرش بکنن ولی بعضی جاها مثل کارهای مثلا عشایری و اینها خودشون با دست خانم ها این پشم رو تبدیل به نق میکنن و حتی ذهنی بافی میکنن فرش های عشایری و قشقایی و حتی حالات گبه اینها حتی با ذهن خودشون نقوشی در این فرش به اصطلاح خرق میکنن و میبافن نقش زنی مثلا در روسته های ما در عشایر در قسمت های شیراز و بختیار اینها بعضی روسته ها هستن که حالی هایی که میفهم مثلا در گرد به اینها اون ذهن خود بافنده ذهنش رو به کار میبنده و نقوشی رو در این فرش خرق کنه و صادرات فرش و قوم چیز حدود مثلا نسبت به کل سطح کشور یک چیز حدود 20 درصد صادرات کل کشور رو تشکیل میده while some rug varieties follow specific designs, most are entirely improvised, with the weaver adding traditional motifs and their personal design touch to the carpet. Handwoven with the finest materials including wool and silk, a single Persian rug can often take years and sometimes decades to create. Most handwoven carpets are produced in rural areas. Furthermore, women make up the majority of carpet weavers and produce raw materials such as silk and wool in rural areas. Etadiye sarasari taoniye farsh dazbaf az sal 73 ba 84 etadiye taoniye tashkil shod va dar hal hazir hudud 1782 taoniye turidi dar sarasari kishvar dar in shahri ashari va rustahi تاونیایی که در وزارت تعاون ثبت شدند جمعیت بالغ بر 113200 کارگر رو تحت پوشش دارند با اشتغال زایی حداقل 250000 نفر از قالیبافان 
هنرمند ایران اسلامی حدود 450 غرفه در این نمایشگاه هست کلا فرش دستگاه هستن و از لحاظ کیفیت با توجه به تنوع بسیار بالای رنگ و طرح و نقش های ایرانی و توانمندی بسیار بالای هنرمند های ایرانی جایگاه اول جهان رو هنوز داریم از لحاظ کیفیت چون که از کردم ما بزرگترین گنجینه طرح و نقش رو از به ارث بردیم اما خب در چند سال اخیر با توجه به اینکه حدود 7000 نفر 8000 نفر فوق لیسانس رشته فرش داریم دکترای رشته فرش داریم این یه جوری سبک و تغییر داده که با توجه به سلیقه بازار نیاز بازار و جوانگرایی شده طرحای به روزی هست که اون هم واقعا می طلبید که چون این دگردیسی در سر این سند ایجاد بشه نوآوری در این سند انجام بشه که خوشبختانه با استفاده از همین جوانای واقعا هنرمند و خلاق این نوآوری به حضور داره در خود نماجگان خودش رو داره نشون میده جامعه جامعه جوان امروزی شاید ترهای سنتی ما رو زیاد دوست نداشته باشن پس باید برای اونا هم خلاقانه ترهایی رو ایجاد کنن تولید کنن که انشالا بتونن نسل جدید هم با این فرش با این هنر بزرگ ایرانی آشنا بشن و بهره مند بشن Such collectives safeguard the rights and income of weavers who frequently receive the least profit from their products. This is mainly due to numerous middlemen businesses that make money from carpets. Cooperatives also serve another purpose. They organize the production chain by linking material producers with weavers and buyers to complete a production cycle. The massive exhibition is one of the best places to get a bird's eye view of this thriving market. Next, we stop by a vendor who is an active exporter of handmade carpets for his insight on production methods. Here's what he said. در کار تولید فرش و صادرات فرش فعالیت داریم. عصر طلایی فرش ایران دوره صفوی است. نقشه های قدیمی رو در واقع تجدید حیات کردن و دوباره به وجود آوردن و با همون سبک و سیاق قبل رنگ گیاهی با پشم دستریس و با مافتای ظریف رو شروع کردیم که حالا عمده صادرات ما در مثلا 8 10 سال پیش به آمریکا بود Yes, you heard that correctly. Ironically, one of the biggest importers of Iranian handmade carpets used to be the United States. This is followed by European countries. However, owing to the U.S. imposed sanctions, Americans were forced to find alternate avenues to satisfy their cravings for these highly coveted carpets. Next, we talk to a vendor who has been participating in the exhibition for years. He explained the importance of such international expos and gave us more input on the country's export market. In this 29th century, the Nemesh of the Nemesh of Tehran was published. We had about 15 dollars to share with him. و این نمایشگاه به نوعی ویترین تمام هنر صنعت پشت دستباف ایرانه چون همه فعالین از همه جای کشور بهترین نمونه کارهاشون رو برای عرضه توی این یک هفته میان و در نمایشگاه تهران عرضه میکنن ما تخصص اون فرشه اشعری رو روستایی بافه فرشه اشعری رو روستایی باف از قدیم بازارهای ثابت شدهش بازارهای اروپایی بوده بازار آفریقای جنوبی بوده اخیرا ما تونستیم به خود چین صادرات داشته باشیم و بازار آمریکا یک بازار تثبیت شده بوده از دوره تحریم ها خب سهم بازار 25 درصدی آمریکا حذف شده و الان همچنان اروپا برقراره و استرالیا که سلیقه اروپایی داره چیز جذاب تو فرشه اشایر روستایی باف اینه که اشایر و افرادی که تو روستاها فرش بافی میکنن اغلب برای مصرف خودشون فرش رو میبافن هر وقت فرش بعدی تولید میکنه یا به هر دلیل یه تنوعی میخواد ایجاد بکنه اون قبلی ها رو میفروشه برای همین اکثران فرش های عشقی روستایی باف دست دوم بودن که اینا به جهت که یه مقدار استفاده خیلی قیمت های مناسبی رو دارن رنگامیزی فرش با رنگ گیاهی بعد از که یه مدت پا میخوره رنگ ها پخته تر میشه زیباتر میشه جذاب تر میشه برای گوشه اتاق بچه هم نمیخوام فرش ماشینی بندازم سرطانزاز علیاف شیمیایی مصنوعی میره تو ریه دف نمیشه اونجا میمونه و تو بلند مدت آسیب میزنه ولی پشم طبیعی به جهت اینکه از پروتینه وقتی که آدم تنفسش هم میکنه یا با دستش بزن به دهنش وارد میشه میره تو معده میره تو ریه و جذب میشه برای همین هیچ آسیب فیزیولوژیکی نداره تو کل کشور براورتا بین یک میلیون تا دو میلیون بافنده وجود داره که داره فرش ایرانی میبافه
For centuries, the Iranian carpet has represented the country's rich culture and art. Its stunning design and exquisite quality have turned the ancient craft into a lucrative commodity sought after by many across the world. But Iran's handwoven carpet exports have also seen numerous ups and downs over the decades. Industry participants say the U.S. sanctions tried to pull the rug out from under the Persian carpet legacy. But the move didn't work and only seems to have increased the world's demand for these items. 1994 was the golden period for Iranian handwoven carpet exports. Back then, exports peaked at over $2 billion. Later down the road, the US imposed a ban on Persian rugs in 2010. After signing a 2015 nuclear deal, the ban was lifted only to be reimposed after Washington unilaterally pulled out of the accord in 2018. That's also around the time when cheap knockoffs of Persian rugs made by Asian countries began flooding the market. Either way, authentic handwoven rugs from Iran still hold their place in the market despite roller coaster exports. The industry is gradually bouncing back. According to Iran's Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture, the country still maintains first place in exports of handwoven carpets worldwide. Based on figures from the National Customs Administration, exports of handwoven carpets increased to nearly 85% in terms of value in the first two months of 2021 alone. According to the National Carpet Center of Iran, last year the country exported some $64 million worth of these items. Also, production went up after the coronavirus pandemic as many craftspeople who had left the sector returned, causing a production jump of around 400%. For this week's special report, I went to a pharmaceutical company to the west of Tehran to check out what kind of technology they had managed to domesticize. Hey everyone, Ali Reza here for the first time on Bazaar. The process that we are checking out today is called uh, plating. Well, it's not actually called plating, it's just very similar to plating. I just thought that that's the name that you had heard. It's actually called PVD or physical vapor deposition. But it's similar to plating in that it's essentially adding a layer of metal on a material, maybe to harden it, maybe to, uh, for decorative purposes, but mostly for decorative purposes. So this is the process that we're checking out today in this edition of Bazaar. The company we're checking out today started their journey by producing microelectronic parts such as vacuum pumps, vacuum tubes, pressure sensors and the likes, but they quickly realized that a better way to implement the tools that they're manufacturing is to actually use the parts to assemble a machine to do coating in a much more sophisticated way rather than selling the individual parts. They found a much better market making those machines and getting clients to coat various objects and materials in their machines or even selling the machine itself to clients so they can run a coating business themselves, as you will see in a few minutes. Let me first show you some examples of the decorative applications that I just talked to you about, to how to turn this rather unappealing looking piece of brass into these uh, shiny looking objects using mainly titanium, but also other materials as well. So uh, the application is can be used in uh, tiles and ceramics, faucets and other kitchen and bathroom appliances, uh, kitchen utensils, bowls, also kitchen utensils, and uh, decorative items such as these three vases and also crystal. Now the different colors that you're seeing on the table are achieved using different combinations of titanium. So if it's just titanium, you get this color as well as this color. But if it's a combination of titanium with nitrogen, 
in the form of a gas, uh, you get uh, this color, this gold looking color, and also this one, which is applied on crystal, has this kind of matte texture to it. And uh, this one, the, this, this like rose gold color, uh, is a combination of titanium, nitrogen, as well as aluminum. And the black one, well, this shiny black one, is a titanium, nitrogen, aluminum, and carbon. So, and, and of course, the last one, the, the crystal, which has this like tint of rose gold, uh, it is achieved using a completely different material, chromium. Uh, but now let's talk about the, some of the processes that went behind to get this company to this place that they're able to make these items. So let's get some more information on that. روش PVD به سبب اینکه متریال خیلی کمتری استفاده میشه زخامت لایه خیلی کم هست باعث میشه که راندمان کار بالا بره ولی همون لایه نازوکی که ایجاد میشه مواد به سختی و مواد به سایش خیلی بالایی داره به عنوان مثال توی ساخت قطعات بورشی یا ماشینکاری قطعات سراخکاری معمولا از پوشش های PVD استفاده میکنن تا مقاومت قطعه رو بالا ببر توی کار دکوراتیو هم همینطور تو کار تزئینی الان روی شیرالات یراغالات بلور و شیشه سنفای مختلف کاربوت های متنوعی داره که با ایجاد رنگ های مختلف میتونه زینت خیلی خوبی به قطعه کار بده و از شفظی بالایی رو تولید بکنه روش های سنتی متریال خیلی بالاتر مصرف میشد و تنوع رنگی که توی PVD هست رو نداشت. Here's how the process works. Once the objects we want to coat are loaded into the chamber, blocks of titanium are loaded onto the cathodes. The anode is the entire chamber itself. Through small holes in a pipe inside the chamber, argon, a neutral gas, is injected. Argon is the preferred gas for the process because it doesn't chemically react with either our titanium block or the loaded material. At this point, the chamber is turned into a vacuum chamber to allow for the gas to flow more easily in it. The argon is ionized, so it moves towards the cathodes that have the block of titanium on them. And it moves at such a speed that it vaporizes the titanium. And now the titanium in the gaseous form is ready and primed to sit on our material in the chamber, especially since the particles of the material have expanded due to high temperature in the chamber, making it easy for the titanium atoms to go and sit in between the particles and stick to it easily after they've been taken out of the chamber at room temperature after cooling down. So when you see the zapping, that's when the titanium atoms are sticking to the surface of the chair or when their coating is happening. I'm sorry, it's the de physical deposition of the vapors as the technical term suggests. Uh, but there is a one missing link here. So uh, what we put in the, the chairs that we put inside the chamber, they were, they had a silver, an unappealing silver tint to them. And now when they're going to come out, they're going to have a gold uh, coating on them. Uh, but here's the thing, the, the missing link is that uh, the titanium block, the titanium block can only give you a silver uh, shine. Right? But the gold shine is not just with the titanium block. If you want to get the gold shine out of it, you're going to have to add nitrogen into the mix too. So through the same pipe that the argon is injected into the chamber, nitrogen in the form of gaseous is also injected into the chamber. And that nitrogen, once it is connected, uh, once it reacts with the titanium, you get that gold tint. And now they're going to open up the chamber. So they were waiting for the air pressure to come back to a stable level because there was vacuum in there. And if they just open up the chamber when there's vacuum in it, that's not going to be good. So this is the final result. There's the gold tint on your silver chairs. And the gold, of course, is the combination of titanium and nitrogen. There you go. ما با ساخت اولین دستگاه صنعتیمون روی کرده اون ارائه خدمات توزیع کاشی سرامیک بود بعد از اینکه تونستیم یه مشتریان رو جذب بکنیم تو حوزه دیگه مثل شیرالات تولید یراق و دستگیره تولید شیشه و بلورای رنگی ورود کردیم که الحمدلله توی صنف‌های مختلف حدود 70 درصد بازار داخل رو در دست داریم و الحمدلله با توجه به رضایتی که مشتریان ما داشتن با افزایش ظرفیتشون معمولا دستگاه‌های دوم و سوم رو هم از ما تهیه کردن و مجموعا حدود 100 دستگاه صنعتی غیر از دستگاه کوچک و آزمایشگاهی توی بازار داخل فروش داشتیم در رابطه با کیفیت دستگاه ما 
میتونم توضیح بدم که مجموعی بودن که قبل از اینکه ما وارد این عرصه بشیم دستگاه خارجی وارد کرده بودن با اون داشتن کار میکردن بعد اینکه ما ورود کردیم از ما هم خرید داشتن در مقایسه با نمونه‌های خارجی رضایت بیشتری داشتن از دستگاه ما و حتی دستگاه قبلی خودشون رو کنار گذاشتن و از ما خرید مجدد دستگاه دوم و سوم انجام دادن که الحمدلله این نشون میده از کیفیت دستگاه ما در مقایسه با کالاهای خارجی خیلی راضی تر In every part of the world, decor takes a different shape. What people spend money on to make their houses look good is different. Gold has always had a special place in Iran, which makes it understandable that we, perhaps more than the average person in a lot of other countries, would like to have ornaments that have that that shine, just without breaking the bank. Us humans love. shiny things we tend to value them more highly than their non-shiny counterparts but you know gold tends to be a little bit more expensive than uh, i don't know titanium or pretty much any other metal so because we can't have something this big that is made out of actual gold that shines we do the next best thing we coat it in gold aka titanium and nitrogen Personally though I prefer things to be more matte but I, you know that's just personal preference but obviously there's a market for these shiny ornaments and furniture and candlesticks uh, so whether it's a gold shine or a silver shine that you're looking for I think now you have a much better idea of where these things get their shine from but anyways thank you for staying tuned for another edition of the bazaar I'll see you guys next time We're getting close to the end of the program, but before we go, let's take a look at some news and trends in the country's carpet and textile industry. Persian hand-woven carpets are some of the world's oldest, most valuable rugs, but watch out, there are scores of counterfeit ones too. That's why these carpets are registered with the World Intellectual Property Organization. The head of the National Carpet Center, Farah Nazrafe, says Iran's hand-woven carpets are registered with the WIPO badge. Rafe describes the global registration for hand-woven carpets as a move towards preserving and protecting this original art industry. These rugs will now be exported with the WIPO badge. Also, other ways to spot an authentic Persian carpet are through its hand-woven knots, which are tighter and more delicate. Another method of identifying authenticity is the choice of materials like wool and silk used in the carpets or by pinning down its regional design. In other news, Iranian artisans have hand-woven a unique rug in anticipation of the famous FIFA World Cup event this year hosted by Qatar. The carpet's intricate design incorporates flags of participating World Cup teams and top figures from the world of football as well as information about Qatar. The master weavers are two brothers from the city of Tabriz. They say they used 70% silk and the remaining a combination of wool and silk. The carpet was created with over 2 million knots measuring roughly 2 square meters and was woven in 34 months. The work of art was unveiled during a ceremony in Qatar's capital city Doha earlier in the summer. It will be displayed throughout the competition for all to see this October. Carpets can be breeding grounds for all sorts of unwanted allergens. So, Iranian scientists have created a special nano-antibacterial coating for carpet fibers which has become quite popular recently.